So I've got like maybe 15 minutes to make this video because I tried making it before and that I kind of didn't, I lost track of what I was doing. But um, yeah, motion blur, you've got some options. So let's just start with Clip Studio. You can use option one where you want to give the entire picture motion blur. And you can just do that by going to filter, blur, motion blur. And then you can pick your angle, which you can usually pretty much tell what angle it's at. But if you're not sure, you can use the degrees and type it in. And intensify the strength. I would not go over 15 if I were you. Um, so you can do that. But maybe you don't want the whole damn picture blurred. In which case, you can have the original picture behind it or in front of it. And um, let's do behind it first and use a mask where you'll just take a big tool like an airbrush, put it on transparency as a color and just erase. That way, if I'm pretending that his body is, is leaping up in the air, I'll just do a gradient where you can see for the most part that there's motion. But it's not overtaking the entire picture. And you can do the same by erasing behind as well. See, like, I er you can see that it's not done well, but <laughs> I erased the solid picture behind it in order to make the knee blurrier, to make it look like it's going straight in the air. But that's not the only thing you can do. I can delete this layer entirely. Oh shit, that was the wrong, yeah, delete the entire layer. And I can try to use the fingertip tool. Although, okay, this method doesn't really work too well for me, but you can you can use it. You can also turn down the spacing if that helps too. Hi, future CJ here. Um, turning down the spacing is actually the key to making this look like motion blur, because without it, you're just basically skip streaking the image around. Uh, I'll put up an example really quick, but yeah. Um, I forgot to highlight how important that piece of information is. If you are not sure how to do it, basically all you do is you click on this little wrench icon in the corner of the default fingertip smudging brush. Um, you'll go to stroke and then you'll click on gap and you're going to click on the single circle right here and turn the number all the way down to zero. Um, clicking anything else is going to leave too much space. Basically that's saying. I want the brush tip to repeat itself as close to one another as possible. If you don't understand what I mean, just just do it and it'll work. That's all. But yeah, basically it'll just give you a streaking effect. Kind of like that. Where like, if there was like spit flying out of his mouth, let me draw that real quick. Okay, let's pretend that's saliva or something. I would take the fingertip tool and do like a little tiny smudge with it. And that way it would look like it's like falling out of his mouth. Like he's whipping his head away from it even. And if none of those options work for you, you could go to our friendly free GIMP, if I could get it on the screen, and use the options there because for example the smudge tool or the fingertip tool is a lot better um let me get my file open sabino sabano and uh there we go you go to the smudge tool this is not the most recent version um and i personally use a soft brush to do this because it gives it more of a transition without you having to do it yourself and I'll pretty much do it from here uh, turn on the spacing turning down the spacing to zero is really important I, I believe that using the smudge tool and gimp gives you a much much cleaner like blur like that looks a lot more smooth and motion like than clip studio and that's okay I think there's nothing wrong with post editing but it just looks a lot neater if you ask me You can do the edges, all of that. Or you can actually use uh, GIMP's motion blur tool, which is under filters, 
blur and motion blur just like clip, although I cannot read. Okay, let's do a uh, circular motion blur. Where it makes it look like the picture is rattling. It's going to take forever because this image is huge. Yeah, it's taking forever. Yeah, GIMP's motion blur tools are a lot more advanced, so I think post-editing is a great option, like finishing the image first and then editing in GIMP, or exporting the layers one by one so you can edit it and put it together in Clip Studio. But yeah, uh, that is everything I know. Hope that helps.